It's great to be with you this afternoon. We are gathered to worship our great God and express our thanksgiving and praise to him. The theme of our worship has been meaningful ministry. Ministry means service, service. And the theme in today's readings is about using material wealth for spiritual purposes. We will find joy in living for him who has blessed us abundantly. So we'll begin our worship with our opening hymn. Please arise. We begin our worship with the name God placed in us at our baptism when he adopted us and made us his children. The name you bear right now as you gather to worship him. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Amen. 
our gracious Father in heaven, has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. For God has shown his favor in Jesus' holy birth. Almighty God and Father, our humble thanks we bring. We worship you, we bless you, Lord God, our heavenly King. O Lamb of God exalted, you take all sin away. Extend to us your mercy and hear us as we pray. With God the Holy Spirit, at God the Father's throne, you reign, O Christ, forever, for you are Lord alone. The Lord be with you. We bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> the first reading is in Exodus chapter 16, verses 1 to 15. We learn how God provides in a wonderful way for the Israelites in the desert wilderness on their journey from Egypt to the promised land. He provides bread from heaven, which comes to be known as manna. Manna is Hebrew for what is it? <laughs> on the 15th day of the second month, after they had left the land of Egypt, the entire Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. The entire Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, 
when we sat around pots of meat and ate as much food as we wanted. But now you have brought us out into this wilderness to have this whole community die of hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Watch what I will do. I will rain down bread from heaven for you, and the people will go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this day I will test whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, they will pre prepare what they bring in, and it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, At evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your constant grumbling against the Lord. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses said, Now the Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening and as much bread as you want in the morning, because the Lord has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Tell the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling. As Aaron spoke to the entire Israelite community, they turned toward the wilderness, and suddenly the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Say to them, at evening you will eat meat, and in the morning you will eat bread until you are full. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. So in the evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning a layer of dew surrounded the camp. When the layer of dew was gone, there were thin flakes on the surface of the wilderness, thin as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? Because they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you as food to eat. The word of the Lord. Be the psalm of the day is Psalm 145b which we'll join in singing together. desires of every living thing. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. 
He hears their cry and saves them. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The second reading is from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth, chapter 9, verses 8 to 11. Paul is finishing his third missionary journey. He's collecting an offering for the needy saints in Jerusalem. Chapters 8 and 9 of this second letter to the Corinthians is all about the grace of giving, sharing our material wealth for God's kingdom and people. We have these selected words. God is able to make all grace overflow to you so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will overflow in every good work. The sermon is based on these words. As it is written, he scattered, he gave to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. And he who provides seed to the sower and bread for food will provide and multiply your seed for sowing and will increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you may be generous in every way which produces thanksgiving to God through us. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Holy Gospel is in Mark chapter 6 beginning at verse 35. It was already late in the day when his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already very late. Send them away so they can go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But Jesus answered them, You give them something to eat. <laughs> they asked him, Should we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? He said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go see. When they found out, they said five and two fish. He directed everyone to sit down in groups on the green grass. They sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish, looked up to heaven and blessed the loaves and broke them. Then he kept giving pieces to his disciples to set in front of them. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. Then they picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. There were 5,000 men who ate the loaves. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. Dearly loved children of God, there are two bodies of water in Israel, one in the north, one in the south. In the north, you'll find the Sea of Galilee. Oh, how beautiful it is. It's the closest thing in Israel to northern Wisconsin. Not quite, but almost. It's the number one source of drinking water for the nation of Israel. They don't allow boats with motors on the lake because they want to keep that precious water as clean as possible. When I saw it, all I could think was, well, now I know why Jesus liked being here so much. Extraordinarily beautiful. Many miracles he performed there, right? Out of the southern side of the Sea of Galilee flows the Jordan River. It flows from 1,500 feet above sea level to 1,500 feet below sea level. In only 65 miles, it drops 3,000 feet. Thus the name, Jordan, Yarden, in Hebrew, which means descender. It ends in the second body of water in the nation of Israel, the Dead Sea, the lowest place on earth. The Dead Sea has no outlet. The Jordan River flows into the Dead Sea continuously for centuries, for millennia. The rate of evaporation in this desert is so great that the sea never overflows. What's left in the lake are salts and minerals. The water is ten times saltier than the ocean. If you get some in your eyes, ooh, does it burn? Nothing lives in the Dead Sea. It's 450 feet deep, the deepest saltwater lake on the globe. Furthest below sea level of any spot on the planet. And some think that the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, which God destroyed by fire, are underneath that deep salt lake. The Sea of Galilee to the north is filled with life, with fish, with fresh drinking water. The Dead Sea to the south is dead. Nothing lives in it. The Sea of Galilee is always giving, always flowing with new fresh water. And though it gives and gives and gives, never runs out. It remains fresh, a life-giving body of water. The Dead Sea, all it does is take and take and take, get and get and get, and it never gives anything back. And it's dead and lifeless. Some call it a picture of hell. In those two bodies of water we see God's will for his people. He doesn't want us to be like the Dead Sea that gets and gets and gets and gives nothing back. See? He wants us to be like that 
Sea of Galilee that gives and gives and gives and is refreshed continuously. The words of our text are quite meaningful. The first verse in our text says this, God is able to make all grace overflow to you like a cup that runs over. Hear it? God is able to make all grace overflow. It's like an artesian well. It just bubbles up. Grace upon grace. Jesus said, I am the living water, right? And he channels his love, his truth, his grace into us. Why does he do it? Verse 8 says, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will overflow in every good work. I looked at the Greek for this passage. It's, it really hit me. Uh, the words are poetic. Uh, in all things, panti, at all times, pantote, having all that you need, pan ergon. Pan, pan, pan. God supplies us richly, abundantly. Why? So that we will overflow in every good work. God gives to you so that you might, be a f- might give to others, that you might be a fountain of blessing. And my friends, this is described in God's holy word as a work of joy. Giving is not a burden for the new man in Christ. Our sinful nature is selfish. It always looks at me, my, and mine. But in the gospel, we share what we have so generously received. God provides in abundance for you and me. Have you thought about how generous God is? You know, we need food, we need clothing to keep us warm in the cold of winter. Uh, Does he give you a threadbare coat, you know? When he gives you food, is it soup that's really thin? You have to look for the meat. Uh, Is it a stale crust of bread that you eat at your meals? Wow, do we have marvelous food to eat, am I right? You and I, we struggle with having too much of it in our country. Uh, You get a glimpse of God in that abundance. He's big-hearted. He's generous. He likes to give to his children. He's not stingy. He's not tight-fisted. And so he blesses us so incredibly so that we might be a blessing to those around us. And yet, you know, when you say, a pastor says, well, today we're going to talk about money. Wow. I, I remember times as a parish pastor, I looked out into the pews and I could see almost the hair on the back of some people's necks stand up, you know. Ooh, I don't want to hear about that. Hey, okay. uh, my friends, that that betrays a lack of understanding. It truly does. This is not a burdensome topic. It is a wonderful topic. It's a part of the Christian life. And if you're having trouble with that, that's that old man. See inside us that always battles against the Spirit. Uh, You know, when 
your tomato plants have flowers that turn into red tomatoes, uh, that's a good thing. That's wonderful. That's what they're made to do, am I right? Um, when the flowers in your flower garden bear blossoms, it's beautiful, right? Isn't that what God made them to do? Um, my wife and I have had grandchildren with us a lot the last few weeks. And to us, it's the most glorious weeks of the year. We're able to have them a lot because they don't have school, they don't have all their sports right now. And man, do they play. I don't know where they get their energy. They swim in the lake in the morning. They swim in the lake in the afternoon. They'll swim in the lake after supper. Then they're running around in the forest playing their various games. Uh, and someone wisely said once, child's work is play. Child's work is play. I believe God made children to play. It's healthy, right? when they play. Uh, our vegetable gardens bear fruits. Our flowers bear blossoms. Our children run and play. A horse gallops. A bird flies and sings. A fish swims. That's what the Creator designed. It's good. It's beautiful. It's the way it should be. And as believers in Jesus, he has poured out his abundant mercy in us so that we might overflow with that same love to those around us. You see, it's a good thing, not a bad thing. Um, verse 10 of our text says, He who provides seed to the sower and bread for food will provide and multiply your seed for sowing and will increase the harvest of your righteousness. You'll be made rich in every way so that you may be generous in every way which produces thanksgiving to God through us. I went to see my uncle in Crete, Illinois. He almost died a few days ago. He has pneumonia. He was unable to breathe. He's incredibly weak and just a shell of the man he always was, a very vibrant principal in school for many years. Uh, I went up to see him at the hospital every day for three days. I'd be there about three hours. The first day, I was ready to say goodbye after an hour because I don't want to wear him out. And he said, are you going? Are you going? Well, then I could tell he wanted me to stay. So I stayed another hour, then I was going to go. And, so you're leaving now? Uh, okay, so I stayed another hour. You know, And then I'd say a prayer at the end, put my arm around his shoulders, tell him that I loved him, thanked him for everything he's done for me and my family. And uh, he would thank me. But... I have been blessed through him far more than I have been a blessing to him. And he was there for my mom when she went through a very difficult divorce with my father. He was an incredible help to her. He's been a little bit like a second dad to me. And whatever I give him is about that big, okay? That big. And what I've gotten back is this. And Romans chapter 13, verse 8 says, let no, debt continue among you except, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. See? We're indebted. We're in debt to God and to one another. And God wants us to show the kindness that we ourselves have received endlessly. Um, the Apostle Paul says at the end of his life, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, I am already being poured out like a drink offering. I love that picture. 
uh, at the temple in Jerusalem, they would have drink offerings, and out of a pitcher they would pour water or some liquid. And Paul says, that's what's happened to me now. He's emptying himself in service to the Lord, in service to his kingdom. And Jesus did that. Philippians chapter 2 says, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, although he was true God, he did not display himself as one who needed to be served, but he emptied himself. Jesus gave it all up for you and me. See? He made that sacrifice of everything. Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And he did that because of our sins, our selfishness, he was selfless. And so I have forgiveness for when I am materialistic and worldly and put myself first. But then I learned from his example at the cross, God wants me to use who I am and what I have for him, for his people, for his kingdom, for my neighbor, for those in need. See, you want to empty yourself, right? This is a blessed ministry. This is not bad. This is what God designed us for. We do it not to earn favor with God, not to pay for our sin. That's all a gift. But because we are grateful people, who realize how richly we have been blessed and how can I not share with others. Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And it is. Amen. <clears throat> the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's say the Nicene Creed. Please rise. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We appreciate you filling out the care cards. It's a way of showing God's love to the many souls that we have the privilege of serving here at our church.
snow winding from your rich and endless store. Nature's wonder, Jesus' wisdom, costly cross, grave shattered door. Gifted by you, we through you, offering up ourselves in praise. Thankful song shall rise forever, gracious donor of our days. Hills and time are ours for pressing toward the goals of Christ your Son. All at peace in health and freedom, graces join the church made one. Now direct our daily labor, lest we strive for self alone. Born with talents, make us servants fit to answer at your throne. Treasure to you have entrusted, gained through powers your grace conferred. Ours to use for home and kindred and to spread the gospel word. Open wide our hands in sharing as we heed Christ's ageless call, healing, teaching, and reclaiming, serving you by serving all. We rise and pray. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Plant your word in our hearts and cause it to produce fruit in our lives. Strengthen and defend your church that by your word and sacraments faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. Lord Jesus, we have many brothers and sisters in our family of believers who are experiencing fiery trials. We pray for those who are listed in our bulletin, for Randy Block, Jerry Zimpelman, Jane Novak, and Marv Radloff. We pray also for the Witty, Kuehl, and Hensling families who are grieving the loss of loved ones because of a house fire. Finally, we pray for Tyler Block, who will be joining the Air Force to serve his country Lord Jesus, take them into your hands and provide all that is needed in body and soul 
Give them peace as they trust in you for all things. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again. Amen. Hear us, O Father, as we pray. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. I don't have any special bulletin announcements. I wish all of you a restful evening 